Now the integral of the secant squared of x should be one that is pretty easy and straightforward because early in our high school days of calculus we should have learnt the derivatives of the three primary trigonometric functions of sine, cos and tan and specifically that the derivative of tan is equal to secant squared and since integration is simply the reverse of differentiation, the integral of secant squared would simply be equal to the tangent of x plus an integration constant. But someone has said to me the problem with this integral is that you need to know this result in the first place. So is there a way of performing this integral without knowing that the derivative of the tan of x is equal to secant squared x? Well the answer is yes. There are actually multiple ways of performing this integral but ironically all of them require you to know quite a higher level of calculus. Well let's explore two of the more conventional or familiar ways of integration. The first approach is mainly centered around integration by parts and the second approach we will use a t substitution where t is equal to the tan of x on 2. So now with method 1, if we take sec squared, by the Pythagorean identity it's equal to tan squared x plus 1. And since tan x is equal to sine x on cos x, tan squared x is equal to sine squared x on cos squared x, so we can write this as sine squared x on cos squared x plus 1 and thus we can say that the integral of sec squared x is equal to the integral of sine squared x on cos squared x plus 1. And of course we can write this as two separate integrals. Now for the first integral sine squared x on cos squared x Let's rewrite sine squared x on cos squared x as equal to sine x by sine x on cos squared x. And in fact, let's uh, make this a double negative. So we have negative sine x times negative sine x on cos squared x. Okay, so the negative sine x times the negative sine x still equals a positive sine squared x. And now when we integrate this, we can consider this as the integration of two parts. So here let's have u as the first part of the integral and here we have dv as the second part of the integral. So with u being equal to negative sine x the derivative du is equal to negative cosine x and the second part of the integral we said was dv equals negative sine x over cos squared x dx. So in order to get v we have to integrate both sides. And we'll introduce another substitution here. Let s equals cos x and then ds the derivative is equal to negative sine x. So the integral then of dv becomes the integral. So negative sine x by dx is equal to ds and on the bottom we have cos squared x which we can write as s squared. And this integral evaluates to negative of 1 on s and we write that as negative 1 on cos x. Okay so we can say that v is equal to negative 1 on cos x. So now applying the integration by parts the integral of sine squared x on cos squared x is equal to u times v so we have negative sine x times negative 1 on cos x minus the integral of v so we have the integral of negative 1 on cos x du times negative cos x dx 
So this simplifies to sine x on cos x minus the integral of dx. Sine x on cos x equals tan x. And this evaluates to minus x. All right, so this result can go back into our original integral. So originally, we had the integral of sec squared x is equal to the integral of sine squared x on cos squared x plus the integral of dx, which is simply equal to x. And for completeness, we'll add an integration constant. This integral is equal to tan x minus x. So we have tan x minus x plus x plus c. The minus x and the x cancels, leaving us with the integral of sec squared x is equal to the tangent of x plus c. Now the second method is quite a bit more involved. To use the t substitution, where we let t equals tan of x on 2, we also need the relationship between cosine and tan of x on 2, which is cosine of x is equal to 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. We also need the differential dx is equal to 2 dt on 1 plus t squared. Okay, so this comes from differentiating t equals tan of x on 2. Now the secant of x, by definition, is equal to 1 on cos x. So we simply flip this fraction and write 1 plus t squared over 1 minus t squared. And secant squared is the quotient all squared, which we can write as 1 plus t squared all squared over 1 minus t squared all squared. Okay, now the integral of sec squared x is equal to the integral of 1 plus t squared all squared over 1 minus t squared all squared by, so dx was equal to 2 dt over 1 plus t squared. Now this squared cancels out with the 1 plus t squared on the bottom and it simplifies to the integral of 2 by 1 plus t squared on 1 minus t squared all squared dt. Now 1 minus t squared here in the denominator can be written as a difference of two squares. So we can write this as 1 minus t times 1 plus t and if we square this to get the entire denominator we can apply the square to each of these terms. Now expanding the 2 into the parentheses the fraction that we're trying to integrate is 2 plus 2t squared over 1 minus t squared times 1 plus t squared. And this we must now break into its partial fractions to make it an expression that we can integrate. So notice I've got repeated factors here. I have two repeated factors which means I'll have a total of four partial fractions. The first factor is 1 plus t and this is repeated. It's repeated once because the power is 2. Similarly for the 1 plus t this is also repeated once as well. And then there are four unknown numerators that we have to solve for. Alright, so if we write a common factor between all of these terms, a common factor of course is going to be 1 minus t all squared by 1 plus t all squared. Now this a term has a 1 minus t on the denominator, so it needs to be multiplied by 1 minus t and 1 plus t all squared. B has a 1 minus t squared on the bottom, so it only needs to be multiplied by 1 plus t all squared. The C has a 1 plus t on the bottom, so it needs to be multiplied by 1 minus t all squared by 1 plus t. 
and the d it has a 1 plus t squared on the bottom so it needs to be multiplied by 1 minus t squared. Alright so basically we're multiplying the top and bottom by the common denominator and then cancelling out the excess terms. And for now let's just concern ourselves with the numerator so we'll forget about the denominator and let's expand all of these terms in. The 1 plus t squared expands to 1 plus 2t plus t squared. The 1 minus t squared term expands to 1 minus 2t plus t squared. And further expanding, we have a outside of 1 plus 2t plus t squared minus t minus 2t squared minus t cubed. So that's expanding these two terms. Let's expand the b in. So we have b plus 2bt plus bt squared. Multiplying these two terms together, we have c outside of 1 plus t minus 2t minus 2t squared plus t squared plus t cubed and expanding the d into its parentheses we have d minus 2dt plus dt squared. So we can simplify here a little bit. t minus 2t simply gives negative t squared. 2t minus t gets rid of the minus t and we're left with 1t. Similarly t minus 2t leaves us with minus t minus 2t squared plus t squared leaves us with minus t squared. So expanding in we have a plus at plus at squared minus at cubed plus b plus 2bt plus bt squared plus c minus ct minus ct squared plus ct cubed plus d minus 2dt plus dt squared. And now collecting all of the like terms we have a plus b plus c plus d. Collecting the t's we have at plus 2b minus c and minus 2d. Collecting the t squareds we have at squared plus bt squared minus ct squared plus dt squared and finally for the t cubes we have minus a plus c. Alright so all of this is equal to 2 plus 2t squared and now we have to equate all of these terms. So from here a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 2. There are 0 t terms so therefore a plus 2b minus c minus 2d is equal to 0 and there's 0 t3 terms on the left so therefore a minus a plus c is equal to 0 and the term in front of the t squared term is equal to 2 so therefore a plus b minus c plus d is equal to 2. Now from this straight away we have c is equal to a and let's label these equations as 1, 2 and 3. So let's sub this result into all of these. So 1 becomes 2a because c is equal to a plus b plus d is equal to 2. Number 2, 2b minus 2d is equal to 0, okay, because a and minus a cancel. And number 3, a and c might cancel again, so we have b plus d is equal to 2. Okay, from 2, we can conclude that b is equal to d. And if b is equal to d, then from 3, we've got b equals 1, and of course d equals 1. And if that's the case, from 1, we have a is equal to 0 and therefore c is equal to 0. So the fraction 2 plus 2t squared 
over 1 minus t squared times 1 plus t squared is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus t all squared plus 1 divided by 1 plus t all squared. And then integrating, the right hand side integrates to 1 on 1 minus t minus 1 on 1 plus t and plus an integration constant of c and of course remember that this is equal to the integral of sec squared x. So here we have the answer in terms of t's and we must convert it back into then x's and to do that first of all let's combine the two fractions so on the denominator we have 1 minus t by 1 plus t okay so we simply then cross multiply to get the numerators so we have 1 plus t minus 1 minus t the top simplifies to 2t and the bottom simplifies to 1 minus t squared and remember that t is equal to tan of x on 2 now this term here let's write this as tan of x on 2 plus tan of x on 2 divided by 1 minus tan of x on 2 times tan of x on 2 and the reason why I've written it like this is because the sum formula for tangent so tan of a plus b is equal to tan of a plus tan of b over 1 minus tan of a times tan of b so if we make a is equal to x on 2 and b is equal to x on 2 then this is equal to tan x. So once again we've shown that the integral of sec squared x is equal to tan x plus c. So after doing all this can you see why it's so important to remember that the derivative of tan x is equal to sec squared x. Alright so that'll do it for this video. If you found this useful please give me a like and don't forget to subscribe for more videos that may help you with your homework or assignments. If you have any questions, please use the comments below. And until next time, best of luck with your studies.